what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new video today we're reviewing the all new vw polo r line i've reviewed the standard polo life i just thought i should take a look at the r line now yeah we're currently in a busy area so there are cars passing around do mind that but other than that i really do hope you guys enjoy this video let's get into it So here it is then, the car is looking so gorgeous in this beautiful paint color which is purple. I don't know what the name of the color is but it looks absolutely marvelous. So here's how the video, the video is going to go down, oh I can't speak anymore. But first I'm going to run you guys through the features of the R-Line, features that come with the R-Line both on the exterior and interior. Then we're going to go for a drive, then I'm going to give you my verdict about this car, what I think. So, the R-Line features, uh, on the exterior, which is where we are right now, obviously, uh, on the front, you have a much more aggressive and deeper uh, front bumper. It has all these fins down here, it has these gloss black touches, it looks sportier, and you also have an R badge right here, which is very interesting. It doesn't say R-Line, it says R. I'm not sure about that, but hey. So, it looks cooler, it looks more aggressive. Uh, this one has the upgraded 17 inch wheels the r line comes with its own specific wheels but those are actually 16 inches these upgraded on top of those you have a little r badge right here on the front fender which looks really really cool um oh the r line has more aggressive and protruding uh, side skirts for that sporty look of course and on the rear there's a roof spoiler which is specific to the r line and uh the rear bumper is deeper and more aggressive and it has these uh, exhaust surrounds or rather replicas which are of course fake which is very interesting but such is life coming around to the interior just gonna put off the ignition quickly the first r line feature that you're greeted by is the r on the door kick plates which looks cool uh, r line specific seats which have an r badge right there they are both cloth and alcantara uh, if I jump inside, you have a, an R-Line specific steering wheel, which has an R badge right there, uh, and there's these silver touches. Uh, the R-Line comes with aluminum paddles uh, down at the bottom. As you can see, the paddles are aluminum right there. And uh, with the R-Line, you get an 8-inch uh, media display, but you can still upgrade it to... 9.2 inches um, our line also comes with a uh, pro uh, driver cockpit uh, virtual display which is 10.25 inches and you can have a bunch of information right here you can have a full width map as you can see and yeah you can change the view you have a bunch of different stuff and that's pretty much all the R line features but other than that it's all polo goodies you have haptic feedback controls for the climate uh, for the climate system uh, which is very interesting uh, so you just slide your finger right here to well you slide it left to lower the temperature you slide it right to increase the temperature uh, it doesn't work as intuitive as physical buttons but it's it's not that that of a big deal it works well pretty much uh, there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto right here on App Connect which is where you get your Apple CarPlay and so on but yeah all the goodies and so on this one is specced with the optional Beats audio system which sounds really really good 
but yeah it also has keyless entry as you can see with this engine start stop button i just want us to check out the engine quickly and then we can head out for a drive so i'm gonna open that so if i come around this side ooh, please tell me there's a gas droid. i doubt it does but i know i might have to hold the bonnet up ooh, and it's a bit heavy so this is the power train it's a one liter uh three cylinder which is pushing about 85 kilowatts that is about 110 horsepower uh it's front wheel drive of course uh the r line comes as standard with uh the dsg system so you can't get the r line in manual which is very interesting so that's another r line feature you get dsg as standard but yeah a lot of pulling power uh a very efficient uh powertrain but yeah that's pretty much it with the r line features i think right now we can actually go for a drive so guys you join me inside the polo r line and having have driven the first couple of meters the suspension feels really really nice like the highlight for me in this car like it's a very nice place to be like all the screens like the layout of the interior everything is just well presented it looks cool it's it's a very nice place to be basically and yeah the suspension is it's well dampened like it's very comfortable the sound insulation like all the exterior noise is isolated from this cabin like you barely hear anything on the outside there's a car that just passed here and i can barely hear it so yeah well done in that sense so as i already mentioned this car only comes in the dsg box 85 kilowatts just under 200 newton meters of torque and yeah decent power really um it works really well with this gearbox because this gearbox is so good it's a double clutch uh it's so good so it makes the car feel a lot faster than it actually is for the power that it offers so it's easy to overtake in this car it's easy to drive like a lunatic and so on so when the car is in drive you just flick the gear lever back once to engage sport and uh, it downshifts for you it holds the revs even longer so let's feel some acceleration Race really well, push it into a corner, handles really well. So yeah, you can you can really enjoy exploiting this car. It's a very fun car to be in. I'm gonna put it back into drive for some better fuel economy and stuff. So yeah, I feel like both the polo and the golf are growing since the golf is now in a different spectrum price-wise, which is the same case for the polo too. There's a gap that the Polo needs to fill. Uh, the Golf is getting way more expensive, and so there's a more open space for the Polo to sneak in, which is where the interior and stuff needs to be upgraded. Uh, the interior quality is still below that of the Golf, like the door cards, for example, are still made out of plastic, whereas the Golf up here on the door cards has soft touch material same applies to the front fascia of the dashboard actually they've actually put soft touch in the front fascia i went on a drive in the 2019 standard polo and the front fascia of the dashboard was hard plastic and now i notice this one has soft touch which is really cool to see they only left out the top of the door cards so yeah coming from something like a swift this interior is miles apart like it's in a different league basically so I understand why these cars are very popular out here but geez that price we're about to get into the price in a few but yeah this car is very nice to drive the highlights remember like I said the suspension feels really nice the sound insulation is very good um, and being the R line it's relatively sporty to drive it's not a car that is meant for performance but it's relatively sporty to drive um, yeah you have all the niceties in here like uh, adaptive cruise control with the uh, 
speed limiter feature and so on this one has the beats audio system so you can really enjoy your music be relaxed go on a long shoes and so on so yeah very nice car to be in oh geez average fuel consumption 10.5 liters per 100 kilometers hey i don't know how you got to that but yeah so guys this is probably a weird angle and switch of locations but we're still in the same location something interesting came to my mind while i was trying to fathom the price of this car and the interesting thing is with the new mark 8 golf you can't actually get it in the standard format of tsi just like this car we have here in sa we can only get the golf 8 in gti and r later we still don't have the r here yet but yeah so this car fills in a gap uh that has been left out by the golf so when you look at it in that perspective the pricing actually makes sense because think about it if this car's base price is 445,000 rands how much was the base golf r line going to be so when you look at it in that way it starts to make a bit more sense but anyways let's jump into my verdict so my verdict on this car actually comes with the pricing the base price on this car is 445,000 rands and that is before options and that is actually a very tough pill to swallow so for that price i don't think this car is worth it because the r-line package is simply cosmetic like all you get is this front bumper you get wheels which are not even the higher or the biggest option you still have to upgrade to get even better wheels and yeah all this all the stuff i showed you is purely aesthetic and don't get me wrong this is a great car it looks marvelous it looks really really cool but here's what i'll do I think I'd rather get the Polo Life, which starts at 370,000 uh, rands, and with that, I'd spec it out. So I would get the Matrix LED lights. These are the standard uh, LED lights. You can upgrade to Matrix lights. So I'd get the Matrix lights, which look really, really cool. Those are called IQ lights with VW. On the interior, I'd get the Beats audio system. Uh, yeah, and a bunch of other features which are optional. Uh, stuff like a sunroof, that's a very popular option on these kind of cars. So, yeah, at 445,000 rands, it's very expensive for something which is purely aesthetic. And it doesn't look all too different from the non R line cars, actually. So, it actually looks a whole lot cooler with the iq lights with the full width daytime running lights so yeah that's my take great car um yeah but the price is just a little bit too much for what it is so if you want one of these get the life spec it out get the iq lights get the beats sound system get a bunch of the other optional extras like the big infotainment screen and so on but nonetheless, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, that's cheers from me.